as we're jumping into this series on the book of Acts, we're going to be looking at prophetic patterns. Because how many of you know, listen, God is a father, not a formula. Amen? You know, the, the job is not to try to just figure God. Because a lot of times if you know the formula, you can reject the source because you know how to do what to do. But oftentimes, once you think you got, figure, you got God figured out, he'll do, some, he'll do things a different way. Amen? How many times went during Jesus' earthly ministry did he appear in a different form? Amen? You know why? Because he was wanting them to see it's not a formula. But there are patterns. There are patterns to what God does. There's orders of operation. There, is, there are recipes where it requires certain ingredients. How many know that you can't, you can't substitute baking soda for baking powder and get the same result? Amen? You can't substitute salt for sugar and get the same result. It may look the same in the jar, but it's going to taste different on the other side. And see, God is highlighting to us ingredients in the recipe of revival that we would not just walk in the expression of revival that we've known in times past. We would be thankful for what God has done, but we recognize that God is doing a new thing and that we would enter into those times of outpouring and seasons of renewal and recognize that moves of God are called outpourings, not downpourings. A lot of times people can, can almost talk about them like it's a downpour, like it's coming from up there down here. But how many know the kingdom of God is within you? Amen. Je they asked Jesus, when is the kingdom of God going to come? He said, it doesn't come through observation. It's in you and it wants out. Amen. Jesus said in John 7, 37, if anybody's thirsty, let them come to me and drink and out of your heart will flow rivers. Amen. And see, God has placed in you the greatest power available to mankind, Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we begin to live unapologetic, unashamed of the gospel of Christ, unafraid, but absolutely thankful, we'll begin to see opportunities that maybe we could not see in times past. And a little step will create a big wave. Just one small act of obedience how many know when that woman with the, with the jar of oil, that widow, when he told her, just take your jar of oil and pour it? How many know that she probably wondered, like, I wonder if this is going to make a difference? Has God ever told you to do something small and if you wondered if it was going to make a big difference? See, but when you're, willing to be, when you're willing to be obedient with your natural, that's when he makes it super. And one of the things that we're going to be doing, of course, in this series on Acts, and even as we begin to launch Wednesday nights as we go into the fall and our, and our connect groups, which is going to be the vehicle by which we grow day in and day out, we're going to really begin to break down the simplicity of the supernatural, that the supernatural is not just limited to the altars on Sunday, but it flows through every part of your life, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Because how many of you know that when you experience, when you encounter the supernatural of God, you become an encounter for others. Amen? And oftentimes, even when we talk about revival, often, often in, in times past, revival was focused in, in the church. There's been great revivals where people came to churches to experience what God was doing. And I know that's one part of revival. We need that. But that's, that's the starting block, not the finish line. You see, we, we, we come together together we get encouraged, we get stirred up, we receive, but then we got to go give away what we've got. Amen. And see, real revival isn't limited to the church. It's not just what God does in a people. It's what God, I mean, it's not what God does in a building. It's what God does through a people. Because every one of us is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And remember in Ezekiel 47, when it said the river flowed, what? Out of the temple out of the temple and you have a river in you. And so Sunday mornings like today, we come and we get a drink. But the great thing about the Holy Spirit is when you take one drink from him, it becomes a river in you. And then wherever you go, that river wants to flow. And it says in Ezekiel 47, that wherever this river goes, it brings healing. It brings life and an exceedingly great catch. That's the saving of souls, hallelujah. That you're not, you're not just sharing your faith, you're bringing other people into his faith, amen. You're not just sharing what God did for you. That's part of it. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. But when you begin to tell them what God has done for you, and then you begin to redirect that to what God is about to do for them, that's when hope begins to come up in their hearts, amen. 
And so again, often in times past, revival is focused in the church, but in this time, the focus will be on what God is doing through his church. Shauna was sharing with us during pre-service prayer how yesterday when she was praying for today, the Lord began to speak to her out of Colossians 1 in the Passion Translation. And for the sake of time, I'm just gonna read verse 11. And Paul prayed, we pray that you would be energized. Woo, how many of y'all could use a little energizer bunny anointing, amen? Pray you be energized with all his explosive power from the realm of his magnificent glory, filling you with great hope. Not just good hope, not a little hope, but great hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the thoughts I think toward you. They're of good and not of evil. They're to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And see, we're called, to, we're called to be the most hope-filled people on the planet. Paul said in Romans 8, we don't hope for what we see, we hope for what he said. Because if we hope for what we've seen in times past, that's not hope. But if we hope for what we've not yet seen, that's when faith has something to work with in the earth. Paul also said in Romans 15, 13 in the Passion Translation, now may God, the fountain of hope, woo, Jesus, Come on, hallelujah, belly up to that. The fountain of hope fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his super abundance until you radiate with hope. That means you're, you've got so much hope, you're shining. You walk into a hopeless situation, all of a sudden what people think changes, they come into what's called repentance. And repentance isn't just saying you're sorry for what you did. Repentance is recognizing the thought that authored what you did that got you to where you are and says, you know what? I'm sorry for what I did, but I'm really sorry that I believed the lie in the first place. And I don't wanna just try to trim the fruit. I wanna come back to the root and I wanna begin to think a different thought, thoughts that are of a future and of a hope because God wants to prosper me, not harm me. He wants to do something for my good and not that the enemy me would be able to work evil in my life. And see, hope is contagious. If you get around hopeful people, you find yourself having hope. Same can be true when you get around hopeless people. If you ever had a conversation with somebody and you, you found your energy beginning to decrease the more they talk? Sometimes people don't need you to listen. You hear somebody talking in the wrong direction, you say, hey, I got an idea. Why don't we shift that? Or I like to, I like to do this and say, you know, the Bible says, because they can argue with an opinion, they can potentially argue with a perspective, but you can't argue with what the Bible says. And so you can always tell if someone is thinking a thought that God is not thinking about them, because if it's connected to their past or brings hopelessness to their heart. And see, the enemy has tried to use hopelessness based on people's past to bring division in the church to where the church would not lead the charge in this hour. Because listen, Jesus came as the light of the world, but when he left, he said that you are the light of the world. And as the light of the world, the church is now the hope of the world, amen? And see, it's not, it's not getting people to church, it's getting them to come into union with the Holy Spirit, that they'd be prepared for that, 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 that wedding feast, that supper of the lamb, amen? So again, God is wanting to fill us with hope, which really is the DNA. That's, that is a primary characteristic of revival. And if you notice, both of those passages pointed to the fact that hope is attracted to trust. It's attracted to trusting the Lord with all of our heart, not leaning on our own understanding, but hope is a ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hope is a ministry of the Holy Spirit. When I have found myself in situations and and, and it may be, maybe I was a little low on hope, hallelujah. That might surprise some of y'all. But I say, God, what am I not seeing that you wanna say? Because my hope is authored by you and not by what I see. I remember one time, I, this was years and years ago, I guess it was 2010. And I had made a mistake in my life. And, and how, has anybody, ever else, anybody else ever made a mistake? Yeah. Aren't you thankful that people don't try to hold your past against your present to disqualify you for your future? There's a lot of that happening in the world. Sometimes it even happened in the church. But I believe in the power of the blood. I believe in second chances. 
I believe in redemption. I believe in mercy. I believe in favor and I believe in justice. And I, and, and I got a message from these folks in Denmark and they had had a dream about me and I, I knew them. I administered to them in some meetings I had done in Europe. And, 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 and she said, I had a dream about you. And, and she gave me, gave me the whole dream and, and, and the dream was encouraging, but the last line was the most encouraging because I was at a situation where I thought that I, 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 I've let God down. Has anybody ever felt like you let God down, right? And she said, I just want to let you know that in, in our language, in, du- in Dutch, I think it's Deutsch, the Dutch is what they speak in Denmark. But anyway, she, it was a Facebook message. And so I'd have to go back through all of them and see exactly, you know, the language. I think it's Dutch. Danish. And, Danish thank you, Sarah. <laughs> if you ever have a question, you, Sarah is the Wikipedia of Kingsway. <laughs> Amen. She, she, listen, she'll give you the answer if you, even if you didn't ask the question. I love me some Sarah P. Amen. Listen, you're going to be in the know when you're around Sarah P. Danish, is that what it is? Like cheese? Danish? Okay. Got to put it in Alabama terms. She said, in our language, the word for hope is hoop. The word for hope is hoop. And they used to call me hoop, right? In fact, Caleb's license plate's hoop. Mine's hooper. And the thing, and, and hooper actually means one who hopes. I was like, oh, I was born to hope. Hopelessness is not in my DNA. But I had adopted a perspective. Now, this past Tuesday, I put out a podcast for a prophetic word of the bridge between June and July. How many of you saw that? And I talked about how July is going to be a month to kill giants. We'll have another one coming out this Tuesday having to deal with Joseph. And, but, um, but I talked about how the, the, the division that came among the 12 spies where 10 saw themselves as what? Grasshoppers. And so they were in the sight of the giants. See, the very ones that God had told them they were, were going to overcome, they found themselves overwhelmed because they didn't see themselves rightly. Pastor Jeff spoke to us a few weeks ago about the importance of identity in this season. And how you see yourself will determine what you do with what God does for you. Because again, revival may begin with us, but it does not end with us. Amen. Everything that God does from us is multiplied when we give it away to others. So again, you have been positioned to encounter and explore new expressions of revival, times of outpouring, and seasons of renewal. You're going to be, listen, God has anointed you and appointed you as ambassadors of his awakening in this hour. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, now then we are ambassadors of God, as though God was working through us, imploring, encouraging the world to be reconciled to Christ. And see, your life is a love letter from God to others. Paul said that, that we're living epistles, what? Read by all men. And see, when we claim to be Christians, we're not, just being, we're not just being people who claim to pray a prayer to be saved from a situation. It's actually saying that we've taken on the nature of Christ and imitate us as we imitate him. Amen? So again, this is a time of hope. It's a time of fresh fire falling. It's a time of fresh oil. It says in Psalm 92, you, you've exalted my horn like a wild ox. You've anointed me with fresh oil. It says those who are planted in the house of the Lord will be what? Fresh and flourishing. That word fresh means fertile. Come on, where are my fertile folks at? Hallelujah. Listen, you may not be fertile in that. We have a promise there would not be one barren among us and that's not limited to natural children. I wanna tell you, listen, you are good ground and God has put his word in your life to produce a God harvest in this season. And so the more that we allow his word anointed by his spirit to flow through us, the more it's gonna change the world around us. We're gonna be looking at Acts chapter two today. Next week, we'll be looking at Acts chapter three and portions of Acts chapter four. But in Acts chapter two, we're all familiar with it. It's the Pentecost passage. How many of you love Pentecost? And see, the great thing was the disciples, they had had a promise from Jesus that was connected to the goodness of his father. It says in James 1.19 that every good and perfect gift, complete gift, lacking nothing, comes from the father of lights in whom there is no shadow of turning. In other words, God doesn't hold back. It says in Romans eleven twenty nine, the gifts of God are irrevocable. They're without repentance. They have no receipts. If he gives you a gift, you can't give it back. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. 
but we're encouraged through the testing and the refining of our character to steward those gifts in a way that our life becomes a gift we get to give to God and then give to others as well. So again, Luke 24, 49, he said, behold, I send the promise of my father, wait in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. And how many know when they told him that, even in Acts 1, they said, so is this the time that you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Is this the time that you're going to exercise some sort of heavenly authority over our political oppressors? He said, guys, you missed it. He said, it's, it's, it's not about me delivering you from persecution. It's me causing you to prosper in the midst of persecution. See, because even when persecution happened in the book of Acts, it didn't cause the gospel to go backwards. It caused it to go farther, faster. Amen. And see, persecution is not something you run from, but it is something you have to respond to in a righteous way to see God have his day. Amen. We're going to be talking about that in the coming weeks. But in Acts chapter two, of course, verses one through four, we see that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And one of the reoccurring themes in the book of Acts, again, we're talking about the recipe of revival that is going to give birth to new expressions of God moving in the earth. One of the reoccurring themes you see is one accord. So what does one accord mean? It means being unanimous, having mutual consent, being in agreement, having group unity, having one mind and purpose. It is a harmony that leads to action. Have you ever heard one person singing and then someone else began to sing harmony? And it took their sound to a whole nother level. It was like, oh man, more heaven just came in the room, amen. And see, that's what happens with a group of people that are under the Lordship of Jesus and are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. That as more people begin to respond to an obedience to what God has told them to do, they give their voice, they give their hand, they give their heart, they give their yes, they give their life to what God is saying. All of a sudden it begins to sound and look more like heaven and the earth. And isn't that how Jesus told us to pray? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Birmingham, in Irondale, as it is in heaven, in Trustville, as it is in heaven. Is anybody, by the way, visiting with us today from outside of the Birmingham area? Is anybody visiting with us? Where are y'all from? Georgia. What part of Georgia? Uh, Southeast Coastal. Coastal. We'll just say Georgia. (laughs) And Georgia as it is in heaven. That's his word to you. Amen. Wherever you are currently planted, that's where God has purposed you to bring his power. A lot of times people can want to get out of one place thinking that if the grass is greener on the other side, not watering the grass they've got. I was talking to somebody one time. They said, yeah, I'm thinking about putting it in my two weeks. I said, oh, yeah. They said, yeah, it's just so dark. I said, oh, maybe you're there to shine. Where do you work? Chick-fil-A. Ooh. <laughs> Man, listen, if it's too dark at Chick-fil-A, you might, have tr- <laughs> you might have trouble at the Waffle House. Amen? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And so one accord, one accord is a necessary requirement for the fullness of what God is wanting to do. Also in Acts chapter two, verse 17, Peter stands up. Now, now I I, I love Jesus. Speaking of second chances, how many know that Peter had messed up, right? In fact, Jesus told him, he said, hey, listen, before the cock crows three times, before the cock crows, you're gonna deny me three times. He's like, not me, Lord. Pride cometh before the fall, amen. You see, and you always have to recognize that, that apart from grace, you can make a big mistake. I always say, listen, every one of us is one bad thought away from making a bad decision, but we're one God thought away from making a great decision. Amen? But Peter had a moment of weakness where his fear of man and his fear of loss and his fear of rejection caused him to deny Christ. And Peter, and God, and Jesus told Peter, he said, listen, Satan asked for you, he wanted to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith wouldn't fail. I bet Peter was like, couldn't you have just prayed he wouldn't sift me, hallelujah? (laughs) Like, couldn't you have just said no? You know, I wonder if Job ever asked that, right? He said, but listen, when you return to me, strengthen your brother. And what he was saying was, listen, you're gonna be challenged and that challenge is gonna become a gift. And you may not respond right in the moment, but you're gonna grow in the process. And when you grow in the process, you're gonna be a better version of Peter than you've ever been. And see, it was Peter on the day of Pentecost that stood up and gave a present understanding of a past prophecy. 
He said, when, 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 when all of a sudden the Holy Spirit fell and there was a sound as of the rushing mighty wind and tongues of fire began to fall 120, he stood up and he said, this is what Joel prophesied. Now, how many of you know, Joel didn't prophesy wind blowing. He didn't prophesy fire falling. But when he stood up and he gave present language and understanding to what God had spoken, all of a sudden they began to speak with tongues and magnify God, which is one of the releases of the prophetic gift. Amen. Because the prophecy in Joel was that your young men would what? See visions. Uh, you know, excuse me, your sons and daughters would prophesy. Your young men would see visions and your old men would dream dreams. In fact, this coming Tuesday, we're gonna be releasing a prophetic word about Joseph. July is a month for Joseph to come out of the prison. And how many remember Joseph got put in a pit by his brothers? The very ones that God had told him he, that he was gonna show the kindness of God to and do you guys remember which brother got him out of the pit? Judah. Judah. And see, praise will always get you out of the pit. Unfortunately, he got sold as a slave. And then he finds himself in, in, in Potiphar's house. He's falsely accused. Has anybody ever spoke evil of your good? Right? Finds himself in prison. Peter could have felt sad. He could have felt sorry for himself. He, he, he could have shrunk back in his witness but he kept his prophetic gift working. And as he continued to interpret the dreams of others, the ones that he interpreted the dreams of got brought into a place of favor that actually became a door of favor for him. Because when, the, when, when all of a sudden the, the, the ruler of their day had a dream that he could not interpret, they're like, wait, we remember this guy. And see, praise will get you out of the pit. Keeping your gift active will get you out of what feels like a prison. And it'll bring you into a place of promotion that will unlock provision for God's purpose. Because what happened was God positioned the right man at a right time to produce a righteous outcome. And it said in the book of Psalms that the word of the Lord tested Joseph. It was actually for 13 years. See, sometimes people get a prophetic word if it doesn't happen in 13 minutes, they want a new word. Or all of a sudden that word starts suffering persecution for the sake of the word, like Jesus said it would. And they're like, this is too hard. This is too hard. Has, has God ever given you a word you start to partner with? You're excited, but then the excitement wore off and you're just like, hey, give me a different word. <laughs> right? It's easy to get excited, but endurance is where we see the promise. Right? And so it said the word of the Lord tested Joseph until the king sent and released him. And one of the things we're gonna see happen in the month of, J of July is those who have been tested and have passed the test. Those who have found themselves trustworthy when other people uh, did not pass the test, quit the test or left their time of testing prematurely, that God is gonna promote them. And see, those of you who have been in a time of testing, for Joseph, it said that his hands entered into iron, his feet were in fetters and his mind was in captivity. His feet being in fetters was limiting where he could go. His hands being in iron limited what he could potentially do, but his mind being in captivity, that's where the real stronghold can happen. And see, if he had allowed what had got on him to get in him, he would have shut his gift down and he still would have been in that prison. Because how you think determines how you live. How many of you know that? So again, Peter stands up with a second chance opportunity and becomes the prophetic voice of Pentecost and one of the fathers of the first century church. He goes on in verse 38 and says, Peter said to them, repent, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you, to your children and to all who are far off as many as the Lord our God will call. And see, Peter had gotten a second chance, so he became an agent of second chances to others. Isn't that amazing? Again, repent. Don't just say you're sorry, think different. Paul said it like this. Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world. Don't be shaped by what's going on in the world around you, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Peter in Acts chapter three, verse 19, he said, repent and be converted. So in other words, if you change how you think, it brings transformation to your life. Repent and be converted that times of refreshing renewal will come to you from the presence of the Lord, whom the heavens must retain until the restoration of all things. And see, God, is, God has sent us, we've been anointed and appointed for a restoration mission. 
Jesus is not coming back to rescue us from a planet that has gotten so bad that he's got to get us out of here. Our call is to restore this planet from the bondage of corruption, it says in Romans 8, verse 19, to see it restored to God's original intent, his original purpose. But we can't do that until we think different. And we can't think different until we think like God. And see, one of the things that limits the expression of revival in the life of the believer is when we think it's all about us. I love to get touched by God. How many of you love to get touched by God? But how many of you know he touches you to become a touch for others? And what you receive in seed form always multiplies when you give it away to other people. Amen? By the way, is there anybody here who has never been filled with the Holy Spirit? You've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit. We're going to be having a time of ministry at the end. I know that a lot of you have probably, of course, have been if you've been here for any length of time. Hallelujah. But one of the things that I really wanted to make time for today is if people are here that have never, they've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit. You've, you're saved, you're born again, but you've not had that additional encounter with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said in Acts 1-8 that when he comes upon you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you would receive dunamis power, miracle working ability to be my witnesses in the earth. And see, being baptized in the Holy Spirit is more than shaka shandai. How many of you, how many of you are thankful for your prayer language? If there's anybody here that has not yet received your prayer language, we're gonna pray for you at the end of the service and you'll get it today. Okay, I've never, seen, I've never seen somebody that we prayed for not get it because we, we're not the ones who give it. Jesus said that, 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 that the father gives it to everyone who asks, amen? And so all we have to do is ask. In Luke eleven thirteen, 13, he says, if we being evil know how to give, our good, give, good, give good gifts to our children, how much more does our heavenly father wanna give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And see, God wants you to have the Holy Spirit more than you wanna have him. But he says, you gotta ask. You got to ask. And see, there's a lot of people that may have gotten their prayer language because their expectation when they prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit was to speak in tongues. And how you know speaking in tongues is great? Paul said, I, I, I pray in tongues more than you all. How many of you are thankful for your prayer language? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2 says, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you're speaking mysteries back and forth to God. Verse 14 and 15 say that when, you, when you're praying in tongues, don't let it remain a mystery, but ask God for the interpretation and the understanding of what you pray. See, when you don't know how to pray as you ought, when you're in a situation, you're like, I don't even know how to pray. And then all of a sudden, understanding starts to come to your heart. The eyes of your understanding, Paul said in Ephesians 1, are enlightened to see the exceeding greatness of the glorious riches of his inheritance in you. And see, sometimes we don't see what God is saying because we're just praying based on an earthly understanding. But Paul said that if we've been raised with Christ, set our what? Our mind on things above. And what praying in tongues does, what praying in your, 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 your Holy Spirit language does is it causes your mind to be set on things above and not things beneath. It causes you to live as the head and not the tail. First Corinthians 14, four says that when you pray in tongues, you edify yourself. You build yourself up, hallelujah. You encourage yourself. It said that David strengthened himself in the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, when, when all of a sudden the Philistines had taken their wives and their kids and all their possessions, what did he do? He strengthened himself in the Lord. And that was pre-Pentecost. He had to go back and remind himself of who, who he knew God to be. See, but we have a fast track to strengthen ourselves in the Lord called praying in tongues. Amen? And I wanna encourage you. You cannot pray in tongues enough. Amen? Jude 20 says, Beloved, uh, praying in the Holy Spirit, building up your most holy faith, keeping yourself in love. And one of the ways to grow in faith is praying in tongues. How many of you pray in tongues? Okay. How many of you, how many of you say, you know what? I probably could pray in tongues more. Instead of, instead of when I go to the bathroom, scrolling on my phone, I could come boldly to the, I could come boldly to the throne and get some understanding, hallelujah. See, because one of the things praying in tongues does is it causes your eye to be single. It gives you heaven's focus on a situation, amen? And so again, if you're, if you're here today, you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, we're gonna pray that you have, you will be. Now, how many of you are here and you pray in tongues, but, but you really don't see miracles flow through your life on a regular basis, but you want to, 
right? We're gonna pray for you too. Because Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, miracles come with them. Amen? Aretha Franklin, what you want, baby, we got it. Verse 40, and with many other words, speaking of Peter, he testified and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3000 souls were added to them. And see church growth is not supposed to be people just leaving one church and coming to another. But 3000 people who did not know God now know God because you know God and have made him known. And what we're about to see in these expressions of revival, this time of outpouring and season of renewal is God beginning to add to the church day by day, not because people got upset at this pastor over here and went to a different church, not because they worshiped too long or spoke too long and went over there, but they're gonna, they're gonna start coming from the highways and the byways from darkness to light as we begin to take the light of the world to them. Amen. As we begin to arise and shine in deep darkness, they will be drawn to him as we lift Jesus up. Amen. But then it goes on in verse 42 and says, they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. And see, one of the things is the fire falls, but you got to fan the flame because they, they didn't just get from God, but they had to continue to grow in what God gave. And fellowship and community is, is really the container for spiritual growth. You've heard me talk in the past few months about how God has been speaking to us about community, life-giving, spirit-filled community being a necessary, hallelujah, <laughs> my mic was going out, being necessary, not only for where we are, but also where God is wanting to take us in this hour. How many of you have been feeling a heartfelt desire for greater relational connection? One of the things that we're gonna be doing is really, that's really our focus in this season. But at the same time, really recognizing giving people the opportunity to serve, to give, really, really it begins to highlight, wait a minute, who actually is in a position where they can lead others in their growth? Because how many of you know when you're not willing to do for others, you limit your growth as well? Amen. And I know that sometimes, even in times past, we've had, you know, connect groups around um, shared interests or hobbies. And I think that's great. That's a great outing for friends to go on. But that's not necessarily a group. Because how many know that sometimes we get together around a shared interest, the spiritual side of things can be an afterthought, right? You know, maybe we give a short word or a short devotion, but there's, there's not really that hands, not, not always. Sometimes, of course, it really depends on the people who are in the, who are in the group. But one of the things that, w- that we've really been working on creating infrastructure behind the scenes is how can we create an atmosphere and an opportunity that challenges each and every person to grow in God into the fullness of who they're called to be. See, because Paul said in Galatians, I labored for you until Christ was fully formed not just until you found some Christian friends and and had an outing one Saturday morning, amen? Saturday morning outings are awesome. Do them, right? Sarah loves them, okay? But there's more, say there's more. And when you look at one of the ways that God really built the foundation of the church, it was consistent, steadfast, fanning of the flame through relational connection, amen? And I wanna encourage you, don't wait for the groups to come online to start relationally connecting. Start asking each other to go to lunch after church on a Sunday. Or if someone already has, find somebody you don't know, get to know them. Don't let the only thing you know about them be the back of their head, their left ear or their right ear. (laughs) You see, you're not just here to go to church on a Sunday morning. God has planted you on this and in this place for cross-pollination that as you begin to allow what the power of the cross has done in your life to begin to be blown into the lives of others, it's gonna produce resurrection in them. And what you're gonna begin to find is you're gonna find so much life in connecting with the people that God has called you to walk with and together you're gonna begin to run with purpose, amen? Again, how many of you just felt that desire for community, right? 
How many of you have felt the desire to not just know about people, but really get to know that person in an authentic, real way? Not just that somebody puts on a church face. I hate fake, by the way. Like, which you're always going to get raw and real with me. Okay? There's, there, I, I, I don't have a filter. I know some people probably wish I do, but most of them have left. <laughs> right, Jeff? All right, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. So what they did was they took what God was saying when they met in the temple, and then they began to bring it from the house into the home and begin to say, okay, what is this looking like? What, like, where, where are you experiencing challenges with what God has said? And how are you overcoming those challenges? Because your testimony prophesies to their process. Are you hearing me? And so it wasn't just everybody doing their own thing. They were all unanimous, one heart, one mind, one accord, going in one direction. Because when God can get a group of people all going in one direction, that's when the tide turns. That's when all of a sudden everything's going this way, but there's a momentum because people begin to say yes to the mission because they've already said yes to the vision. And that's what we're gonna do on July 17th is really sharing vision for serving. What does it look like to grow and to give? And I promise you, you're gonna find so much fulfillment and not just connecting with the people you're called to walk with, but also beginning to give your life to the lives of others and in that find new life as well. Verse 43, then it says, then fear came upon every soul which was reverential awe, honor. And many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who were believed were, to get, were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them all as anyone had need. And see, when you really find this kind of kingdom koinonia connection, lack is eradicated in the body of Christ. It doesn't just mean that, 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 that you have a need and someone sells a possession so they can give to you. That may happen, but oftentimes what you have need of is actually sitting right next to you. The person who has the idea, I was talking to Carmen Burns a few weeks ago, just about some things that are in her heart, you know, in dreams and visions, and then even just practically as an interior designer and, and just beginning to connect. Like there are so many gifts and treasures in this house but one of the ways that we're gonna unpack those treasures is sharing with others the treasure that we are and then looking into their life to see what treasure they've got. And say, so, well, she's, she does this and he does that and I'm called to this, let's go start a business. Hey, you, you, you're gifted in this area, I'm gifted in that area. Hey, why don't we go make a difference in our city? What, instead, of, instead of you joining with me and praying about my problem, why don't you and I work together on bringing a solution to the city and watch how we recognize that problem really wasn't a problem. It was a distraction. It was a distraction that caused me to think about myself too much and to think too little of others. Amen? But then it goes on in verse 40, 46 and verse 47. And this really to me is the blueprint even for connect groups or life groups or small groups, meeting house to house in a way that creates spiritual growth with continuity and fruit that remains. It says, so they continue daily with one accord. There it is again, unanimous agreement in the temple and what? Breaking bread from house to house. Now, what does breaking bread speak of? Shout it out. So communion, that's one example. Somebody else? Roy, what'd you say? That, well, see, we're, we're going to get to that. That's coming up. I knew Roy was going to eat. Hallelujah. Listen, you hang out with Roy, you're going to eat. Hallelujah. And you're going to laugh. And you're going to see that one of the things that happens in New Covenant community is people have fun. You don't, you, you're not a different you when you hang out with them, right? But you find a genuine joy I'm not talking about some sort of humor that causes people to be less than who they're called to be, but you find such a joy and a fulfillment because that's who Jesus is. You see, prostitutes could hang out with Jesus and they wouldn't feel condemned. Tax collectors, why? Because they found life with him. When, Zacchae when, when Jesus came to Zacchaeus' house, he didn't have to tell him, you stole. 
Zacchaeus knew he stole. But when the goodness of God showed up at his house, he said, you know what? I'm gonna sell everything I've got. I'm gonna restore everything I've stolen fourfold. You know why? Because when the goodness of God comes into your life, you wanna do good things. And it says in Acts 10, 38, that God was anointed with the Holy Spirit and went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed because God was with him. So breaking bread from house to house, it certainly can mean communion. That's one example. But I think about it like this. Breaking bread from house to house. Jesus said that what? Healing is the children's bread, right? So it's ministering practically to the needs of those you're connected with. Do you need healing? Let's get you healed. We're not gonna pray about your sickness. We're gonna heal you of it. Hey, you've been dealing with some torment, some trauma. Hey, listen, we're, we're not gonna talk about it so that everybody else comes into torment and trauma. We're gonna begin to speak hope in the place that the enemy has brought hopelessness. Oh, you believed a lie? No condemnation. We're gonna serve you truth, hallelujah. We're gonna put your butt in a chair in the center of the room and we're gonna prophesy the paint off your walls because when the anointing shows up and the anointing comes on you, the devil comes off. Also in Luke 24, Jesus did what? He broke the bread. And what happened when he broke the bread? Their eyes were open and they knew him. So it's a place where you get to say, hey, I was reading the Bible today and I saw something I've never seen before. I, Richard and I have these conversations all the time. He's like, man, look, you know, let me tell you what the Lord showed me. Because how many of you know that's what the body does? You see, all of our growth, it, it can't just happen on a Sunday morning. Sundays are to celebrate. Sundays are to commission you. Sundays are to stir you up. Yes, to strengthen you. But real growth happens when the rubber meets the road on Monday. Hallelujah. Has anybody ever had a case of the moon days? Y'all seen that movie? Okay. I always got to re remember that a lot of these movies I saw before I was a Christian. So I, gotta, I hesitate to give pastoral endorsements. Amen. Tina's like, you got to quit talking about Die Hard at Christmas. Amen. There's so many people that have come back and be like, so Jason really likes that movie. I stand by that, amen? There's a angel version, I'm sure. But what you're doing is you're saying, wow, this person has a need and every need is met in Christ in me. So let's go ahead and minister to this need until we see it met. Hey, this is, I was, I was watching a teaching. Uh, Richard called me the other day and he had watched a teaching from Bill Johnson that had spoke to him and brought in encouragement. He said, hey, listen, I saw this and I wanted to share it with you. How many, that was him breaking bread. We had, we had a wonderful gluten-free meal on the phone, hallelujah. And if you're gonna do it with Richard, there's probably gonna be a pork butt involved. It's all, oh. <laughs> hallelujah. Come on, we're delivered from the law. But then, so they broke bread from house to house. So you're ministering to the needs of those you're connected with. You're sharing, hey, this is what God spoke to me. Yes, you're continuing in the apostles' doctrine. You say, hey, listen, if, if God is speaking to us as a house by the fear of the Lord, let's break this down and say, what does this look like in our life? What does this look like for you? What does this look like for me? So that together iron can sharpen iron. Then, Roy, they ate their food. Hallelujah, come on. He knew we were going there as a prophetic God on him. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. So they enjoyed a meal together. And guess what? It wasn't just about what was on the plate. It was who was at the table. Because how many of you know, what makes a meal is not what's on your plate, it's who you share it with. Listen, it is no fun sitting there with a TV tray, eating a hunger man microwave dinner, amen? But you go to Texas Day Brazil with 30 folks, hallelujah. Hmm. Amen, amen. How many of you recognize that the meals you remember most, you probably don't even remember what you ate, but you remember who you ate it with. And see, God has prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And God is calling people to your table that are key to help you to overcome in this season so that you could, be, you could enter into the goodness, the favor and the mercy that God has for you. Verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. Now that, that doesn't mean that they just had a scheduled time of worship at the end. That can happen if it's in your heart to do it. But it doesn't mean that, okay, all right, let's see here. We prayed for the sicker at the meeting. You know, Bobby Joe, Jim Bob, you know, he, he, he shared what the Lord spoke to him in Proverbs this morning. Amen. I just said that because I don't think there's a Bobby Joe, Jim Bob here. Is there a Bobby Joe, Jim Bob though? That'd be amazing. Amen. Did we ever figure out who, which female left her keys in the, in, the, in the bathroom earlier? That'd be a fun one. Okay, I see the hand. All right. 
Again, not a word of knowledge, Marsha told me. The, um, <laughs> a lot of times we look at the scriptures as a checklist to check off instead of a recipe we're called to follow. All right, so we ministered to the sick, we shared what we know, we ate, let's sing a song and we'll go home. Praising God is more than a song being sung. It's about coming together with an adoration and a thanksgiving in our heart for what God has done and praise for what he's about to do. It's an atmosphere of testimony. One of the things that we've been doing a lot as a staff lately is just before we talk about what needs to be done, we begin to testify to what God is doing. And see, that's, what, that's how the, even the office culture of Kingsway was built years ago was not getting together and talking about the meetings we needed to have, the services, the conferences. We would get together and we would just start celebrating and testifying what God was doing in your lives as we began to hear how God was moving. And it was the testimony that would always tell us what to do. It was the testimony. It was stopping to give thanks for what God was doing because if you can recognize, just like in healing ministry, if you recognize what God is touching, you recognize the direction to continue to go with. Amen? You're like, okay, God is obviously moving in this direction with families. God is obviously moving in this direction in healing. How can we continue to partner with his hand in that area? And what you're gonna begin to see is you're gonna begin to see a momentum in the places where you have previously felt stuck as an individual because the oil begins to flow when we begin to come together. Amen? Then it goes on, not only praising God, but having favor. Say favor. And how many of you want more favor on your life? Here's the recipe. Having favor and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And see, I never want people to leave another church and come here. I want to see people who don't know Jesus know Jesus. I want to see people who have never experienced the power of the Holy Spirit come and be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because we're not called to swap sheep, we're called to save the world. We're called to go out and save others because he saved us. We're called to find people that don't know him and introduce introduce them to the one we found. I'm gonna close with just talking about favor and then we're just gonna move into ministry. I've been praying about favor as a foundation for this expression of revival. I've been saying ever since I came to Birmingham that what what God has promised to Birmingham is a revival of his ways. I'm thankful for the works. It said in Psalm 103, 7, that he made known his acts to the children of Israel. How many of you love the acts, right? We're, we're gonna be studying the, this month and the next month, the acts of the apostles, the acts of the Holy Spirit. Acts would be the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit manifested. Healings, miracles, right? Prophetic words, dreams, visions. Acts are what God does. But it said that he made known his ways to Moses. And when you understand his ways, his works flow freely from you. Jesus rebuked the generation that he spoke to because he said, you guys are looking for a sign. You guys are just wanting to see the works. You're just wanting to see the multiplication of food. You don't understand the way because you don't understand the why. And see, the ways of God reveal the why of God. And when you lose your why, you lose your way. And it says in Psalm 119, verse 37, turn my eyes away from worthless things. Keep me from distraction, that you would revive me in your ways and establish your word to your servant who fears your name. And what God has for Kingsway and for every one of you here is a revival of the ways of God where the works of God will flow freely. To where we don't just have to come around one miracle and make a ministry out of that, but there'd be so many healings and so many miracles and so many works and greater works of Jesus flowing through the body that we can't even keep count. That we don't have to look back and remember when, but we live in a glory to glory momentum of what God is doing. Amen? Two verses the Lord gave me for you today with favor. The first is in Psalm 102, verse 13. Speaking of God, you will arise and have mercy on Zion. How do you know in the old covenant, Zion was a place, but in the new covenant, Zion is a people. You will arise and have mercy on them for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. This is a set time of favor for you. And see, favor is an anointing to steward what's been given to you in a way that blesses others. Favor is not about what you have. 
Favor is about what you can accomplish for others because of who has you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, in the classic Amplified, for he says, in the time of favor, of an assured welcome, I have listened to and heeded your call. I have helped you on the day of deliverance, the day of salvation. Behold, now is truly the time for a gracious welcome and acceptance of you from God. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Go ahead and stand to your feet. This is your set time. It's a time of favor. But God is inviting us to come together into the favor and the time that he has set. How many of you are here today and if, if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I just want you to boldly come to the front. And we're gonna pray for you and you're gonna receive the Holy Spirit. And not only are you gonna receive your prayer language, come on, I've been praying for you this week. Not only are you going to receive your prayer language, but you're going to receive power for miracles. How many of you are here today and say, you know what? I pray in tongues, but I haven't really tapped into that miracle anointing that I know that God is calling me to. If that's you, I want you to come to the front. I'm going to invite the worship team to come and to play. And listen, we're going to have Sundays where we just pray for everybody. Touch, 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 touch. But these were the areas I really felt like the Lord highlighted today. And then again, next Sunday, we're having our healing service. And I want you this week to go gather people that you know that need healing. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive a miracle working ability. And so again, if you're in the aisles, just go ahead and come on down, fill in. And here's, guess what? We're all on the ministry team today. Every one of you, have you received, have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit speaking tongues? Okay. Here's what I invite you to do. I want you to begin to start moving up behind these folks. You can fill in the, some of the other aisles or just stand behind them. And I want you to begin to start speaking heaven's mystery over them. See, because we all want community. It's a unity we come to. And sometimes it's easy sometimes to even come to like be a part of a service, but almost almost kind of like connecting at a distance, right? And sometimes the person you pray for may not be a, a person you need to pray for. You may not be up here. Maybe they're down there. Just go ahead and make your way down. And again, you, you, you know, if, if they're coming with you laying hands on, of course you can do that. But honestly, guess what? You don't have to lay hands on to release power. It says in Habakkuk 3, that out of your hands would flow lightning. I want you as you're praying for them, I want you to see if power and virtue flow from your hand and begin to touch them. The Lord knows what they have need of even more than they do. They may think they're here for one thing. They may think they're, they're, they're like that, that, that man at the gate, beautiful. They're wanting gold and silver. And the truth is, is they've been lame and they didn't know it. They need to be healed. Man, honestly, my spirit wants to jump into next Sunday already. You know, this healness and healing and wholeness. I want to tell you, listen, the Lord gave me a word months ago about the rebuilding of his body. And I can see it happening, man. Jackson and I spent four hours one afternoon this week. I can't remember what day it was because it's just been like, so, that's been what my week's been like. But I want to tell you, listen, what God is doing in you is so beautiful. And it may be in seed form right now, but there's gonna be a maturation process that begins to take place. I'm gonna ask Pastor Jeff and Pastor Suzanne to begin to pray as well. And I've been thinking about you all week. Yeah, I have. Tina, and I've been talking a lot about you. You're amazing. Jesus said in Luke 11, that he gives the Holy Spirit to everyone who asks him. So let's ask him, say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. You feel that bubbling in your belly? That's the Holy Spirit. Nicole, can you put your hand on her spirit? I want you to open up your mouth and just begin to let those sounds come out. There it is. There it is. There it is. Thank you for that joy. Thank you for that peace, Holy Spirit. Just start putting your voice with those sounds, that bubbling. 
Oh, there it is. Hey, hallelujah. Kandarabo shombo. Hey, shandaramondo. Umburamando reba sete. I've got you. Kumburamando rabo shombo. Ramandere ba sombo. Ondaramandaraba samba. Some of you have received your prayer language before, but it's about to shift into a greater RPM, a greater revelation per minute. Revelation per minute. Some of you, your, your, your prayer language was good enough to get you to where you are, but God, there's an upgrade. Oh, shandaraba sanda. Right now, I just released that fresh RPM, that revelation, the revelation per minute right now. The greater revelation. Just keep stirring it up. Oh, shamba. Holy, holy, holy. Shamba ramandaraba shamba. Oh, shandaramanda. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, shandaramando. Jesus breathed on the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. There's such a tangible presence of the Holy Spirit here right now. Just begin to breathe them in, begin to breathe them in. Pastor Jeff, Pastor Suze, why don't you go ahead and start praying for folks. Oh, shandaramando. Oh, shakaramando re shaka. Upgrade. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, kandaramandaraba shamba. Will we loose new levels of power, greater authority, greater anointing. Oh, shut up. Greater joy, joy unspeakable. That ministry of hope. Janet, the Lord has given you a ministry of hope. Hope, 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 hope. Hope that knows no limits. Hope that doesn't disappoint because of the power of the Holy Spirit. I call you into that hope. Hope. <laughs> oh, Lord, let the oil of joy and the wine of fullness come upon David. Oh, shut up. Hey, ha, 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 yes, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, 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 Hey, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, Seth, why don't you pray for Mick? Pray for Mick, bless him. He's a father of joy. Oh, shambaramando. Oh, shakambarabasaka. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Power, power. Oh, power. Oh, fushakapa. All things new. This is your joy season. Joy, 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 joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, joy, oh, an anointing of joy. Not only to have joy, but to bring joy. Oh, Romondo Raba Shumbo. Oh, Romondo. I am so proud of you. Oh, there's going to be people that knew you guys three months ago that won't, they, they don't even recognize you now but they certainly are not gonna recognize where you're going. I bless you. I bless you in the light that you have stepped into. I bless you even as we talked about today, continuing steadfastly. I bless you in the place of planting right now, that place of truth and purity and consecration. It says those who are pure in heart will see God. And what you're about to see is gonna wow you. It's gonna bring you into not just the deeper things of God, but also the simplicity of Christ. There's gonna be a grace to break down things that other people have tried to make hard to understand in a simple way where anyone can come to truth. Oh, Jesus always made what, what religious people made difficult, Jesus made easy. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And there is a rest coming upon this house. It's a faith rest where God is gonna do so much more through you than you could have ever done for him. I bless you in that anointing and revelation of rest and joy. Joy, Abigail, this is your joy season. You're a daughter of joy. And I feel like the Lord is like mantling you guys with joy and peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you guys are catching mantles for miracles. And listen, you're not even gonna know it until you guys start praying for the sick and see God moving. Ha 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 ha. See, because a lot of times we're like, okay, once I get a guaranteed answer to the prayer, I'll pray, then I'll pray it. Listen. It's like Elisha, go out and strike the ground and say, where is this God of power that I heard about? Hallelujah. 
Just beginning to step up and let the Lord come upon your prayer. Ain't that right, Sarah? Oh, Shambaramanda. Oh. Lord, I bless, Lord, even the eating of food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Even as we wrote, wrote about in the book of Acts, some of you, there's foods that you want to eat that you've not been able to eat because of digestive issues. And right now, the Lord is, there's a healing happening in the digestive tract, in the intestines, right now to where there's going to be a gladness and a simplicity of simply enjoying a meal that you desire. Oh, Shambaramundo. Thank you, God. Ha, 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 hey, 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 hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh bless you, Jesse. Bless you, Jesse. Oh, get Jesse with the overflow, the backsplash. Oh, the Gallagher anointing. Hey, how about the watermelon all over you? Watermelon all over you. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, I love you, Lori. It's time to reap in joy. It's a no more tear season. Mm. I saw like a shampoo, it, was like a, it said like no more, I'm not even sure if it's a real shampoo, but it said no more tears. And I saw the Lord washing your hair with a no more tears shampoo. And see, hair speak of strength. And, all, and it, was like, it was like, I saw like we're, we're mourning or even sadness had almost kept like the fullness of your strength from be, really being able to be fully formed in this hour. But you're in a no more tears season. <laughs> it's time to reap in joy. Joy. Oh, Shamboramundo. Oh, champion of grace. Champion of grace. Champion of grace. And God, I thank you, Lord, that each and every person, Lord, Lord, that you are, you're, you're helping to define our footing for this season, to give understanding of the gate and the grace that we're called to walk in and occupy, that every person would know their place without question. in the morning. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, joy, joy. Wow. And see, the Lord said to follow him, we have to deny ourselves and take our, our cross. But I felt like as soon as I hugged you both, I felt this sharp pain on my right shoulder right here where it's almost like you've been carrying so many crosses that belong to other people that you didn't even have room in your life to carry what you were called to. And right now I just speak, Lord, that that, that burden, Lord, that the yoke is being destroyed right now and the burden is being removed in the name of Jesus, that they would not carry a cross that they're not called to in this season, God. Lord, that they could be like, they could be like Simon the Cyrene and come alongside of others to get them where they're called to go, but they would not carry the pain of someone else's past, God. I bless, Lord, even that whole word about next week about the emotional wholeness and even the mental healing is such a word that I see taking shape in you guys. Even as I was, CJ and I were just hanging out in my living room the other night, I just began to see that this is gonna be such a time of joy and restoration for your family. Such a time where the enemy, the places that he's tried to steal and kill and destroy, that there's gonna become such a fullness of abundant life that there's not even gonna be room for the thief at your table anymore. I loose you from the cross of others in the name of Jesus that you're not called to carry. And I call you into his yoke that is easy. I call you under his burden that is light. And I declare this is a time of rest and restoration for your family. Come on, man of God, pray for me. Oh, Shambaramondo, oh, Shambaramondo, oh, Shambaramondo, oh, Shambaramondo, oh, Shambaramondo, oh, Paramondo, Rabashaka, hey, come, Paramondo. Oh, there it is, 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 Kundoramanda, Rabashaka, oh, Shambaramanda, come here, Rocky. Wow. Wow, thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow, that spirit of heaviness just came off. I felt like just a lightness come. Brookie, when I hugged you, I just felt like a, it was like this heaviness came off. And I thank you, God, that you've given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
Come on, even where you felt like your feet were tired, like I talked about Joseph, his feet entering into fetters, there is a loosing. This is a king releasing you to step into your word season. Mm, thank you, Jesus. In the places where your word has suffered persecution, you're about to prosper. You're about to overcome. You're about to, you're about to press into that place of more than enough, more than enough, more than enough joy, more than enough peace. It says those whose mind has stayed on him, he keeps them in perfect peace. And I bless your mind. Oh, to be stayed, to be fixed. That's it, Dustin. Pray for him, buddy. Oh, samba. samba. Kyle, why don't you pray for my friend right here? Go ahead, buddy. You're good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, there it is. That band around your head leaves now. That, that pressure that has come on your mind goes now. That captivity that has tried to push you down and hold you back and even bring a less than perspective of how you see yourself comes off of you now. I thank you, God, that she is a daughter of the King and that she would see herself with the favor. This is your set time of favor. Just like when Esther, when, when the King extended a scepter to her of favor, I declare that this is your set time, set time, set time of favor. And I declare everything that has worked against his favor in your life is leaving now in the name of Jesus. There it is. There it is. Ooh, Shabba, AK, Anda. Why don't you stick your hand on her belly? Could you do that? Father, there it is. Right now, we just stir up that gift of God. We stir up that gift of God right there. Just begin to pray with me in the spirit. And the things can come on, building up your most holy faith. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Deep, 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 calling it deep. There it is. Oh, samba. It's like a plumbing of your well. There it is, there it is, there it is. Plumbing, plumbing and plunging, plumbing and plunging, plumbing. Those things that have been stuck, that, 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 that have been dumped on you, that were, that were hard almost kind of let go of. It's like the words that others have spoken that landed heavy in your heart. Right now, they're coming off in the name of Jesus. There it is. Ricky, put your hand on Diana's uh, belly. Father, right now, God, I just bless the continued healing process. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for a season of promise, God. Lord, that what they've seen with their heart, they're gonna hold with their hands in every area. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there it is. This is your hope season. Winds of hope blowing, blowing on you. Winds of hope, winds of hope, winds of hope. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm, Will, let your fire get more wild, hallelujah. Your name may be Will, but the Lord calls you wild, 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 wild. Ooh, Shabbat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Breathe them in. There it is. Breathe in that breath of hope. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. I bless your mind. I bless your mind. I bless your mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, shayatara. Hey, karakata. Come on. Joy and peace of the superpowers right now. <laughs> there it is. 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 Lord, unlock that virtue, God, that virtue. Alicia, there's going to be an outshining, just like with Peter, how his shadow healed the sick. 
you're just going to be like walking past people and depression is going to leave their life. I just saw specifically like an authority of your nearness that's going to break depression. And they're going to be like, oh my gosh, a dark cloud left. And it's like, we're, like, like people are all like, like, like you're, you're a weather pattern that's getting ready to happen. I bless the new day dawning. I bless the sun of righteousness rising with healing in his wings. And I bless these hands and the gift of healing, Lord, that you've given to her, God. Lord, I bless her voice to bring deliverance, God. I bless, Lord, the voice of deliverance and the hands of healing. And God, I bless that atmosphere of hope in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, we bless the new. We bless the new. We bless the new. We bless the new. Hallelujah. Sam, Kim, come pray with me for, for Ray. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Jesus. Ray, I bless how you continue to count it all joy. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Count it all, every bit of it. It all adds up to joy. It all adds up to joy. It all adds up to joy. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Jesus. You've, you've always been a man of great faith but now you're also a man of great patience. And patience is one of those things you never wanna ask for, but you wanna make sure that it, it, it has its work in you. And faith and patience together inherit the promise. And so Father, I thank you, Lord, that even when faith is tested, it's so patience can have its complete work. And so Lord, I thank you, Lord, even for the work of patience that Ray is allowed to work in and through him, God. And Father, I thank you for this inheritance season, Lord, that he is coming into, God. God, I thank you for his, his love for the body of Christ, genuine love for people, genuine love for the body. And I wanna tell you, Ray, listen, you're, you're gonna do things that other people have only dreamed of. Your words are gonna bring so much, your words already bring so much life, but get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Like Abraham spoke to things that did not exist as they did. I just see your words beginning to break hopelessness off of hearts, beginning to even break uh, just mental illness off of minds. Father, I bless the anointing on Ray Higdon in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Ooh, shayabara. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha. Step into your season of joy. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Lord. Hey. Thank you, Lord. God, I bless Paul as a bread breaker, one who's gonna begin to bring others into the knowledge of God. Just sharing it. Listen, I, I just see it's not gonna be through many words, but it's gonna be through, 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 through few words, but great understanding that all of a sudden your words are gonna cause lights to be turned on where others have only seen darkness, where they've had questions. Like these words, just even in passing in casual conversation, you're gonna bring the answers they've sought. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Danielle, can you come pray for Angela with me? Just come put your hand on her spirit. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Unlock. 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 Unlock not just the gifts that others have seen. Not just unlock the gifts that are at the surface, but the, the deeper gifts, the deeper grace, the deeper gifts, the deeper, deeper grace. Thank you, Jesus. It says in 1 Corinthians 14 that when one prophesies, the secrets of her heart are exposed, that they're brought to the light, that the treasure on the inside that nobody else knows about is brought up and given out. And so I just bless this is a treasure a treasured season for you, Angela, and a season where others are gonna to begin to experience his treasure through you. Open up the treasuries, Lord, open up the treasuries. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Mm, well done, good, 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 and faithful. So good because he's so faithful. <laughs> mm, wow. I bless the testimony of David in your life. 
I bless the testimony of David in your life. I bless the testimony of David in your life.
Hallelujah. Jesus is awesome. We love you guys. Don't forget next Sunday. Hallelujah. Healing and wholeness service. It's going to be a Holy Ghost blowout. Holy Ghost healing and wholeness. Who's ready for some of that? Come on, Jesus. We love you. We bless you. Go give away what you got. Amen. Thank you, Lord.